Hey everyone, Tyler from DualCasterMage.com here. I'm finally taking a little break from the streaming videos to upload another Dual Commander deck tech, this time featuring Goto Bandit Warlord. As always, the link to the deck list is in the video description. Goto has been around for a long time, but was pretty underpowered prior to the printing of Helm of the Host in Dominaria. In this video, I'm going to go into detail about how to combo off with Goto, which is technically a one-card game-winning combo straight out of the command zone. First things first, let's look at Goto himself. He's a 6-mana 3-3 human barbarian that lets you tutor an equipment directly into play when he enters the battlefield. This is really important, but equally important is his second ability which lets you untap himself and all samurai when he attacks for the first time each turn, after which you get another combat phase. Now let's go over the main combo which will allow you to win the game the same turn you cast Goto. The most basic version of this does not require a single additional card, just Goto himself. The core combo is fairly simple. You cast Goto and fetch Helm of the Host, putting it directly into play. Why is this equipment such a game ender with Goto? Well, each line of text is absolutely essential. Like American Indians hunting buffalo, not a single piece goes to waste. Helm of the Host says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary if equipped creature is legendary. That token gains haste. What this means is that if you can equip it to Goto, when you go to combat you'll get a fresh token copy of Goto, crucially one that isn't legendary and has haste. So once you declare the token as an attacker, the extra combat trigger will happen, untapping all Godos you have in play at that point. And even though Goto says whenever it attacks for the first time each turn, you're always generating fresh new Godos, so the trigger will happen each time. Depending on what they have for blockers, first you attack with one Goto, then two Godos, then three Godos, etc. until they're dead. Technically, you can spread the cost of playing Goto and equipping Helm over two separate turns, which would require having access to just six mana for Goto the first turn and five mana to equip Helm the following turn. However, doing this exposes Goto to removal for a full turn cycle, which is oftentimes just too risky. For this reason, the majority of time it's best to wait until you can cast Goto and equip Helm the same turn, which without any help requires 11 mana total. Obviously, 11 mana is a lot, and in Dual Commander you don't have access to as much busted fast mana such as Soul Ring, Mana Vault, and Grim Monolith like you have in Multi-EDH. So with that being said, you have to get a little more creative if you want to win in any reasonable window of time. Still, using the following enablers, it's not uncommon to combo off and win on turn 4 or 5, even in Dual Commander. The first way to accelerate the combo is simply to use the best mana ramp that hasn't been banned. Here I'm referring primarily to cards like Worn Power Stone, Thran Dynamo, and Gilded Lotus. There are a few good ones that add 2 or more mana to help turbo out Goto. It should be noted that to play Goto and equip Helm only requires a single red mana and 10 generic mana, so you can take full advantage of these rocks that only produce colorless mana. You can also ramp with your lands. There are a handful of lands that produce 2 or more mana even if it's just a one-shot effect. Cards like Ancient Tomb, Crystal Vein, and Dwarven Ruins are good examples of this. A more subtle way to cheat the combo out involves either copying Goto's Enter the Battlefield triggered ability or taking extra turns. First, let's talk about copying the triggered ability. At first, this might not seem to do anything. However, there's another equipment that makes this plan viable, Hammer of Nizan. Hammer says, whenever it or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach that equipment to target creature you control. What this means is that if you can copy Goto's triggered ability, you can first grab the Hammer, which will auto-equip, then you can grab Helm of the Host, which will also auto-equip. At that point, you're free to start attacking with your army of infinite Godos. The two cards in the deck that let you copy triggered abilities are Strionic Resonator and Panharmonicon, but you can also achieve a similar effect by copying Goto himself using cards like Twin Flame, Heat Shimmer, and Flame Shadow Conjuring. With these cards, one of your Godos will die due to the legend rule, but that hardly matters as long as you can tutor up Hammer, followed by Helm, and get that free equip of the Helm to whichever Goto remains. Another way to cheat the equip cost of Helm is to use free equip effects. This is very straightforward, and there are two cards in the deck that will allow you to equip Helm for 0 or 1 mana, Brass Squire and Magnetic. Theft. Finally, you can cheat the combo out using Time Walk effects. I know it's bizarre in Mono Red, but there are three cards that can give you an extra turn. Final Fortune, Last Chance, and Warrior's Oath. Even though they say you lose the game at the end of your extra turn, it really doesn't matter if you kill them first. Since each of these only cost 2 mana, they reduce the cost to combo off from 11 mana down to 8. All you have to do is cast Goto for 6, cast the Time Walk spells for 2, then untap with your extra turn and pay 5 to equip Helm. Perhaps even better than the cost reduction is the fact that they allow you to combo off out of nowhere, even if your opponent knows it normally takes 11 mana to one-shot them. You can also get creative with these spells to scrape together a winning line. For example, if you already have Panharmonicon out but only have access to 5 mana, just cast Final Fortune, play your 6 mana source during your extra turn, and go off with Goto. I found they come in handy in all sorts of unexpected ways. 
A lot of the time things don't go according to plan, which is quite problematic for an all-in combo deck like this. What happens when you draw Helm of the Host? That one's easy. Just cast Godo, tutor for Hammer of Nizan, pass the turn with an indestructible Godo, then cast Helm the following turn and auto-equip it. If you naturally draw Hammer, it's even better. Just cast Hammer before casting Godo and the Helm you tutor for will auto-equip. There are only two more equipment I have in the deck which can serve as a plan B of sorts, assuming you can at least cast Godo on six. The first is good old Batter Skull. Tutoring Batter Skull is a great way to stabilize if you're really under pressure from your opponent's attacks and you can't afford to sit there and wait until you can combo off in a single turn. The amazing thing about Godo is that he's always going to be relevant when cast from the command zone, even if he has died once or twice prior. The final equipment is our Gentum Armor. This beast is rarely something you're going to want to raw dog out into the battlefield, but it's one of the only ways in the deck to get around something like Ghostly Prison, which would otherwise be a Stone Cold combo killer. You can even use it while you're comboing off for extra fun. Just sequence your equipment tutors in the order of how Helm, hammer, and armor, which will be freely equipped off the hammer, throw in that batter skull at the end for good measure. If Helm somehow hits the graveyard, there are a couple ways to get it back. Conjurer's Bauble and Doretti Scrap Savant. These tuck it back into your library to be tutored for later, or put it right back into play respectively. Even still, opponents with tons of interaction might prevent you from assembling the main combo. One solution is the backup combo of Dual Caster Mage and Twin Flame or Heat Shimmer. The way this one works is you cast Twin Flame or Heat Shimmer, targeting a random creature while holding priority. With Twin Flame still on the stack, cast Dual Caster Mage and use its ETB trigger to copy Twin Flame. The new Twin Flame copy should then target the Dual Caster Mage. The new Dual Caster Mage can copy the original Twin Flame, which will still be on the stack. Just keep repeating this loop until you have an arbitrarily large army of 2-2 two -two mages with haste and swing for the win. At the end of the day though, this deck is really hard to win with if your opponent can stop you from assembling your main combo. It's not really feasible to devote all your deck slots to ramp and combo pieces. Especially in Dual Commander, you really have to take into account what your opponent is doing. With that in mind, there's a healthy amount of interaction and creature removal in my version of Godo. This ranges from the classics like Lightning Bolt and Fiery Confluence to more niche stuff like Pithing Needle and Chaos Warp. Of course, Blood Moon's gotta be in there for those free wins. Godo also creates space for some really sweet tech to shine. Perhaps my favorite is the one and only Paddle of Glory, Honor Worn Shaku. You might not realize at first that this card effectively makes three mana during the combo turn. Tap for one colorless to help cast Godo, then when Godo's in play, tap Godo to untap the paddle, add a mana, then tap the legendary Helm of the Host to untap the paddle again to get that third mana to help equip Helm. Lion's Eye Diamond really shines in this deck for the exact reason that Godo is a one card combo from the command zone. It can come out of nowhere to get you that surprise win, at which point it's basically just Black Lotus. Counter spells can be a real problem for Godo for obvious reasons. The two best tools you have to fight them are Cavern of Souls and Defense Grid. Cavern can be fetched with Expedition Map to double the number of effective copies, and Defense Grid is pretty one-sided in this deck. Another card I'm trying out is Veilstone Amulet. This card prevents your opponent's instant speed targeted removal the turn you cast Godo. Because it triggers on cast, Godo will already have hexproof from the amulet by the time he hits the field, allowing you to combo off with impunity. Finally, I wanted to mention Carekeep, another sweet value land that lets you pop out kobolds to either shield Godo from diabolic edict effects or pick up an Argentum armor and go to town when Godo is stuck in the command zone. <laughs> Godo has a good chance to win against aggro decks that aren't packing counterspells because it's generally faster and packs a full 7 ways to sweep away tiny creatures with pyroclasm effects. Also, they basically need to draw instant speed removal to stop your combo, and even then it's not hard to pull off a surprise victory while they're tapped out. Midrange decks like Marin are also solid matchups since they're slow and don't offer too much meaningful interaction against you. If they blow up Godo's mana rocks, it's an annoying setback, but you can usually find ways to pull off the combo before they can kill you. Control decks are tough matchups since they often pack a lot of counter spells and instant speed removal. Here you have to pray to get Cavern of Souls or Veilstone Amulet into play, or just play a surprise Godo when they're tapped out. Aggro control is almost worse than control because they can potentially kill you before you can get a chance to combo off, and they're packing counter spells. If they're savvy enough to force spike Godo with it in the stack, even if you have the extra mana, that can be enough to break up your combo since the mana math is so tight. Like most mono red decks, Godo is not for the faint of heart. Whenever you lose, it will look like a complete slaughter since you probably will have done nothing of substance the entire game. On the flip side, there will be games where you start the turn with just lands in play and end up burying them under an army of angry barbarians. It's just what you sign up for when you decide to play Godo, nothing more to it. And that way the deck truly embodies reds all in nature. Plus, in what other dual commander deck do you get to play with Black Lotus and three copies of Time Walk? Thanks for sticking with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the deck and any sweet tech I missed in the comments section below. And if you like this deck tech, check out the rest of my channel for more primers like this one. And while you're there, why not subscribe to keep up to date on all the action. It'll help you stay notified as well when I livestream Dual Commander gameplay, which I do every Sunday starting at 1.30pm Central US time. Take care, and thanks for watching.